I'm professional outdoor photographer Lynn Chamberlain. Today we're headed for an area near Zion National Park to photograph mule deer from a blind. Okay, so this is kind of where I want to be. I was up here a couple of days ago in this flat that's out in front of me here. Saw two really nice mule deer bucks. This is typical deer winter range, kind of open, brushy, um, sagebrush in particular. This is a good place for mule deer to spend the winter. Not uncommon the right time of day to see the neighborhood of 100 mule deer in this big flat up here. Now these two bucks um, that I'm after tonight were right up here to kind of the northern end of this flat. So I'm going to go up there and I'm going to see if I can find a good place to put a blind, get it set up, hopefully before any deer come out and I disturb them at all, and then we'll sit and wait. That's kind of what working out of a blind is all about, is sitting and waiting. You know, even if it doesn't feel really cold outside, if it's just a little bit on the cool side, it's a good idea to put on at least a light coat because when you're in a blind, you don't get a chance to move around a lot. And when you're stationary for a long period of time, even if the weather's just a little bit cool, you start to get cold and uncomfortable. And one thing you don't want to be in a blind is uncomfortable because it requires a lot of patience and a lot of time just waiting for things to happen. So put on a jacket. Some other essential things for working out of a blind, of course, a good tripod. I really like this really right stuff tripod. It uh, just really works well. I love the way it feels. I love the way it works, the craftsmanship behind it. It's a great piece of equipment. So a good tripod is essential. Take that in with me. Also, you got to have a chair. You got to be comfortable for a while, so you're going to need to put something to sit on. So don't forget to bring your chair with you too. So a tripod, a chair, a camera. It's a good idea to bring some water because you'll be there for a while. And one of the things that happens sometimes in this colder weather too is you'll get a dry throat and you'll start to cough. And of course that kind of noise is not a good thing around a blind. So bring some water, a chair, a good tripod, your camera, and prepare to stay a while. When considering what equipment to take into a blind, it's a good idea to remember that you may be walking for some distance across difficult terrain. I find it helpful to use equipment that's light and uncumbersome. It's a good idea to keep this in mind when choosing equipment to take into the field. It's also important to leave your vehicle a good distance from your blind so that it won't disturb wildlife or accidentally get into one of your photographs. When placing a blind, Try to think like the animal that you're trying to photograph. Pick a spot that is out of the traffic areas and where the blind will blend in with the background as much as possible. And it's just that quick. There it is. Next trick, get everything into the blind and set up. Ready to sit down and wait. When it comes to making things light and easy to carry into the field, nobody makes a better camera pack than Click Elite. I don't go anywhere without this small pack. It holds my camera, three lenses, memory cards, extra batteries, and everything else that I need in the field. It even doubles as a monopod, with the Really Right Stuff head attached to the handy click stand. The wait time can really drag on when you're stuck in a blind. It's a good idea to bring along something to quietly occupy some of the time. I've got three groups of deer and one down here to the south. like a couple of smaller bucks way out there sparring a little bit. 
The sun was nearly down when the first of the bucks began to come near the blind. When they finally showed up, I only had about 30 minutes of good shooting. In the end, it was worth the preparation and I was abundantly rewarded for my time.